Well, welcome back to the show. Well, the cost of living is biting everyone, and for some, it is worse than others. Our next guest, Angela Finch, is a single mum. She's got three kids and she's studying full time. She gets by on the single parenting payment, half of which goes to her rent, and what's left over is to feed the rest of the, fa the, rest of the family. But with the grocery prices skyrocketing, Angela is now being forced to skip meals just so she can feed her kids. And Angela joins us now from Hobart. Angela, thank you so much for your time. Gee, it's tough at the moment, isn't it? Hi, um, it sure is. It really, um, it's just getting tougher actually. It was tough two years ago, but now it's, um, it's getting worse and scarier every day. Um, yeah, it's really, really hard. Um, when you live on a tight budget, there's only so much you can cut before there's nothing left to cut and that's definitely where families like mine are at. Um, and it doesn't seem to be an election issue at all, unfortunately. Mm. Um, Angela, thank you for sharing your story. I, I know it wouldn't be easy um, and, and I have no idea how hard it is for you at the moment, but can you give us, if you don't mind sharing, uh, an idea for, for everyone watching around Australia, what you're kind of working with, the parameters you're working around and the decisions you're making about food on the table? Um, yeah, the, dis the parameters are really tight. Over half my income goes on rent. Um, and then the rest of it's divided up like the rest of the country with electricity and food and medications um, and internet so I can study. Um, mm. They're all essentials and I can't, the only way I have been able to tighten my budget is to actually for me to start skipping meals and we've, I've had to cut stuff out for the kids. Um, so they used to be able to do swimming lessons which is a life skill they can't I can't afford for that to happen anymore. Um, as it is, I am owed quite a lot in child support. I'm owed about $17,000 in child support. That money has started being paid in small increments, so my family tax benefits have been cut um, because of that. So now I'm in a position where I have to decide between st continuing my studies to create a better life for us in the future or giving it up and going get the first job I can get. Um, mm. which will just, um, it's not going to make our future any brighter or any better. I just feel like it's a continuing cycle of treading the wheel. And this is my little one who's interrupting because no, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is, that the, is that the four year old? Okay, she's, this is my four year old Nancy, yes. The uh, teenager and almost teenager was a bit too early for them. Yeah, of I course. understand, I understand. Well, pick um, them up if you need, that's fine. I totally get it. We've, we've got little Liz at home, we totally yeah. understand. But Angela, just hearing like yeah, that, she's that idea good, of you. She was very shy. Oh, that I idea of you skipping um, yeah. you know, meals to, to get by, like what happens if there's an unexpected cost? Like one of the kids or yourself gets sick and, and you need to go to the doctor? Um, it doesn't happen. I've already cut down my medication. I've cut it out um, as much as I can. Um, and we, ha we, me and my youngest daughter actually had COVID the other day, uh, the other week, sorry. And there was just nothing. Like there's no, there's no contingencies. I don't know a parent in this country, if they're not in my situation, who doesn't have child Panadol in the cupboard ready to go. Um, families in my situation don't have that. Um, we don't have the contingency just to run out and spend okay. 10, 20, 30, 50 dollars on a doctor's appointment. Um, okay. We have to go through, we, there's no choice, like our, mm. our, all of the choices taken away um, from what we can provide our children and I, I, I'm a little bit overhearing that our leaders understand and that they mm. understand that it's mm. really hard and I do believe that. I believe that they do know how hard it is and I believe that they know that because they put in the coronavirus supplement straight away and that money for families like mine went straight back into the economy which has produced these numbers which they're campaigning on now and we're put back on the scrap pile. There are so many issues in our country and in our communities and globally that we um, 
it seems like our leaders are as an either or situation. We're a really rich, smart country and it's either we can have defence or we can have healthcare or education or support people correctly, but we can't have it all. And I don't understand why we can't have it all. And I don't understand why my family is put down as an expense instead of an investment. Um, we know that if we support correct people correctly that it brings down our healthcare budget, our mental healthcare budget, our education budget. We know Angela. that supporting people correctly um, can, can um, bring down those other costs in the budget. So I don't understand why hey. we're not worth the investment. My kids aren't worth the investment. Angela, I wanted to ask this before we go because uh, you're like, uh, I don't know how mothers multitask the way they do and we're just watching a perfect <laughs> example of it. There's dogs and there's kids. And, uh, and you're also articulating in a very, very significant way um, what a lot of people are going, on, going through out there. What would you like to see? What, what, what eases the burden for you before we go? Um, bringing back the coronavirus supplement, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. Doing something about our child support debt in this country. Um, I'm pretty sure if our government was owed $1.7 billion and not single mothers of this country, they would do something about it. But they're not doing anything about it. Um, they, I want, I want that money back. It goes straight back into our economy. It's not mm. like we're squirrelling it away and saving it for a rainy day. It is pouring in our world and we are drowning. Um, we're not asking for too much you know I I don't want to sit here and this isn't my lifestyle we don't families in my situation this isn't a way to live we're barely existing let alone this is a lifestyle we want mm. I'm trying to work for a better future for myself and my children Beautiful. and the knock-on for effect for that for them is generational it's just one yeah. after the other um, so Whoa. We, I want to see my leaders. Listen, listen we'll, to, we'll to we'll me. We'll let you go and deal with that, Angela, because we, we get it. And, and it's really important. It's really important. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for your time. This and look There's at no it, one and, here to keep a company. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Look, it's, it's an important thing. It's such an important issue because there are... Thank you, Angela. Mm. Um, because there are so many um, people out there just on that line right mm. now. Um, and, and it's another reason also um, yeah. why... We do breakfast television so that we're not at home with the kids in the morning. <laughs> Didn't that make you miss yours? <laughs> I felt for Angela then. It's like we've all been there, right? It's just, it's, it's no, tough. It's and like, she's there doing it on her own. It, it, on national TV. <laughs> it's like it's, it always happens at weird times, like in a lift or at the supermarket. And mm. it's just, it's just. But she joy. just kept going, right? Because what a trooper. that's what mums do. What a trooper. Well,